Hello True Believer and welcome back. So today we're going to go through activity number two, guess that number. So this is what the Word document would look like that you're going to go through step by step. And this is what I'm basically going to be following as I build my program. So the first step is we're going to make a, a new scratch. Um, save. And we're going to save this guy as, and we're going to call this one, guess the number. Right, so the first thing we need to do is probably delete Scratch because we don't need him. And we're going to add in our in own sprites. So the ones that I've chosen for, um, for this program, I've just done Anna and Elsa. So if we just open this up. Game development lesson number two. And add Anna. And then we're going to add Elsa. We also need to set the backdrop, so uh, we should know how to do that now. So we click on the stage, go to backdrops, and we do step number two. So step number two, choose a background. Um, there's a whole heap to choose from. I think I chose the winter with the sun. I don't know if we can find that again. Yep, there we go, the slopes. And we're gonna put Anna and Elsa in. So that's, sorry, I went step ahead and we did step three first. Now, if these images are looking a little bit too big, we can actually shrink them. Usually the best way to shrink them isn't on the actual uh, screen, but on the sprite itself. So if we come over here to Anna, and up the top we can either grow her, or what we would prefer is to shrink her down. Actually, let's just undo that. So now I've chopped off the head. Uh oh There we go. So she looks fine again, and we just go to the shrink option. So up the top here, shrink. And we click on Elsa and we'll shrink her down as well. So there's Anna, there's Elsa. Awesome, so now we're going to add some speech bubbles. So under step number four, and this is for Elsa. So if we click on Elsa, um, we then go back to our scripts. And the event is when the green flag is received. Then we go looks. So we're gonna go say hello. Hello, let's play. And we're gonna do that for three seconds. Then we're gonna go say there. And I am thinking of a number between one and 30. I'm gonna do that for four seconds. And then we go, say, what's your guess? Do that for ten, two seconds. And now we're gonna have a little bit of a different thing. So we need to broadcast a message. So in, for, in order for this to work, we're basically gonna tell Anna that there's an event that occurs and we're gonna broadcast the message that Anna needs to receive. So we're gonna broadcast this so the other sprites can know. I'm gonna do a new message that's called Anna, okay? Which will be revealed later uh, when we open up Anna, what she needs to do. So the control, we then get her to wait for two seconds based off the, uh, the document that I've written up. And then we're gonna go looks, say, and no, not you, Anna, let them play for three seconds. Okay, so that's all of Elsa's script done that we needed to do. Now, if we open up Anna, we're gonna to need to go through the same thing. So we're gonna go control, uh, sorry, events first, because we wanna receive the green flag. And when we re receive that green flag, we actually wanna hide Anna so that she pops up and asks that question. Then when we want to uh, receive the broadcast, so when we receive the broadcast message for Anna, we want to show her by clicking on this. And then we want to say, ooh, me too. So we go, ooh, can I play? So now that should pop up, okay. Right, so that's all the sort of speech to start off the game. So then the first, the next bit 
is we now need to make up a few variables. So the first variable that we're going to make is the guess. We then want to have the lives. And then we want to have the secret number that they're going to work out. Fantastic. So now to the stage, we want to basically make uh, the, the secret number be generated. Okay, so when the game starts, we want to always set the lives to a certain amount, which we're going to have five of the five guesses. And we want to see, set the secret number to a number between one and 30. So we're going to hide the guesses on this by clicking on these checkboxes, move the lives up here. And basically we go back to the events when the click occurs. So this is the script for the backdrop. We're going to set the lives to start to five. And then we're going to set the secret number to a random number between one and 30. Now the really cool part about scratch is there's an actual operation for that already. So we go over here to pick the random number from one to 10. And instead of one to 10, we change that to one to 30. So now we have the lives variable set, which is fine, and the secret number set as well. We haven't set the guess yet, but that will occur with the next step. So that's step six done. So we're gonna move on to step number seven. So on the Elsa sprite underneath step four, so we go back to Elsa, and we're gonna go underneath this little bit of code that we've written up here. We're gonna have a repeat loop, okay? So we're gonna repeat this five separate times, okay? And we're going to ask, what is your guess? So this is a sensing input. So the, the box will ask you this. Okay, so what's your guess? And wait. So now it's going to wait until you give it a response. We're then going to now set the guess. Okay, so we're going to set the guess that's occurred. And we want it to have the answer that we responded with, which is this button here. So ask what is your name and there's the answer. So this is the cool part with Scratch is that it will go off and work that out. We now want to compare that with the guess in the secret question. And if it's good, we're going to stop the whole repeat and exit the game. Okay. So we go up here to the control loop and it's an if statement, which is what we've been learning about. And we want to check if it's equal to each other. So we're going to go under operators equals and we're going to check if the guess that we've just set is equal to the secret number. Okay, now if that's true, awesome. We're gonna finish the game up. So we go over here to looks, say, and we're gonna go, you are our mind reader for three seconds. Okay, and then this is the cool part. We can actually stop the script. So we go down here to stop and we go stop all. So then that's the end of the game. Oops, sorry, that needs to go inside of the if loop, otherwise they'll just stop straight away. Right, that's step seven done. Now for step eight, we need to check whether or not it's too big or too small. So similar with this is we could, re we could go through and reproduce that. Or what we can actually do is a thing called the duplicate. So if we right click on that branch there and go duplicate, and do that twice, and then get rid of the stop all. There's the section that we needed to do. And we need to change this a bit. So instead of using the equals, we're gonna go if it's less than, and then put the game variable in and the secret question, or sorry, the guess variable. And instead of you being a mind reader, now that's gonna read too small for th uh, two seconds. Similar with this, we're gonna go here when it's greater than. And then the guess. And then the secret number. Too big. And do that for two seconds. And get rid of that. Awesome, so now, each time that happens, we want the, the number of lives to decrease. So we're gonna change the numbers by. So we're not gonna set them. We're gonna change it. And after that occurs, we're going to drop that down by a negative one. So we're going to subtract uh, one from the number of lives. And that goes in there. So that should go through all that. Once that's all finished, we then now want to say congratulate them for guessing it. 
So we want to say what the number was and uh, how they got it. Now the way that we do this is we use the join method, which is in here, which is used for when you want to merge words and variables together. Okay, so join the number was space. And instead of using that, we can now go up to here to secret number. And that's it. So now we'll show the, the person at the end whether or not the guess was correct. So now let's play this and see actually what occurs. Hello, let's play. I think you're a number between one and 30. And we're gonna use the strategy that I've um, gone through with my other videos. So I'm gonna guess halfway between 30 first. So that's gonna remove a whole heap of things. So my first guess from number of one to 30, I'm gonna try 15 and then click OK. Oh, well, there you go. I guessed it straight away. I'm pretty good. Just to prove that I didn't program that, which is a bit of a fluke. Um, let's play it again, just so that you can see the strategy behind how to guess it within five. So what's your guess between one and th 30? Here we go again. I'll try 15. So it's too big. So that means that the number has to be less than that. Um, so we're going to go through and guess what the number is. So we're going to choose seven. So too small. And now I'm going to go between that. So I'm going to try 11. Too big. So it's now going to be between seven and 11. So let's try nine. Too big. And it's probably going to be eight. There we go. So see how I've guessed that within five different guesses. Now, if you want to extend it, there's a few different options that you can do with this. Um, if you read down here, so you might want to make Anna and Elsa play with each other, um, add in a timer instead of lives. There's a whole heap of different things that you can play around with this. And that's up for you. Have a bit of an experiment and sort of think about it. So thank you for watching this and looking forward to seeing your gameplay.